Gracias. Yeah, yeah no, and um, well, thank you all for um, the invitation to present here today. So I'm Molly Cross, and I work with a global conservation organization called the Wildlife Conservation Society. Um, we work, and then I work on specifically on climate change adaptation. How do we prepare for and plan for the effects of climate change in our conservation work? And I'm the director of climate change adaptation for all of WCS's Americas program, so both North and South America. And um, I wanted to just indicate that I'm speaking to you all today on this topic of how do we develop goals and objectives for your proposals and for our work in general. Um, I'm speaking from my own experience in doing climate informed conservation planning. So I spend a lot of time doing structured conservation planning and in training others in how to do it as well. Um, but I'm also speaking from my perspective running a grant program as well where I review a lot of project proposals and I'm often in the position of asking applicants to, um, you know, to clearly describe their overall goals and the objectives and the actions that they're proposing and, and how they connect the dots to really articulate that the actions that they're proposing are what's really important to meeting the goals and objectives of their work. So hopefully um, some of the content of this presentation will be helpful to you all as you think about preparing your um, full proposals and I'm happy to um, answer some questions after I run through a couple of slides just laying out some of the basics about how we think about defining clear and compelling goals and objectives that can then set up the rest of our work. Let's see. So at its core, focusing on our goals and objectives is about thinking about where we are going and how we are hoping to get there. And in particular, thinking about this, especially I know a lot of the projects that you all are proposing are large group efforts. So how do we make sure we're all on the same page and we're all heading in the same direction and taking the same path to getting there? Now this step of focusing on goals and objectives and taking the time to clearly define them and articulate them is a key step in, in all kinds of different structured planning processes. Approaches like structured decision making or the open standards for the practice of conservation are two that I'm really familiar with from the conservation world, but there are probably a lot of other stepwise planning documents that start with this step of defining our goals and our objectives. So it's a really important part of just about any planning process. And um, I realized that some of these terms can be used in slightly different ways. And so I wanted to start by defining how we are using the terms, goals, and objectives here today. When we talk about goals, we are generally talking about high level desired outcomes sort of the big picture down the road in the future, what's the desired condition for the system that we're working on? So it could be something like trying to recover an endangered species, or it could be something that's more about that interface between people and nature, trying to maintain a functional coastal system that can support both wildlife and people. So the exact focus, whether it's a single species or a more complex type of ecosystem-based target or ecosystem services doesn't matter. But when we talk about our goals, we really want to sort of articulate what's the high level desired future condition. When we talk about objectives, or um, we, we are really trying to get a little more specific and try to articulate the specific measurable milestones towards meeting our, our bigger picture goals. So this is where we're trying to um, be as quantified as we can and be really clear about the direction of change that we're hoping for from the system. So if we're trying to recover an endangered species, our specific objective might be to increase the population of that endangered species to a particular population number that's considered viable. 
for the goal of trying to maintain a healthy coastal ecosystem that can provide services to people in nature, well then a specific objective to get there might be to increase the amount of healthy mangrove and salt marsh habitat that is available within a particular geography. So again, just a couple of examples of how we're using those terms. And I'll go on to describe a little bit more about how we use these terms and how we think about sort of how we think about our fundamental objectives and how we're going to try to get to those goals and objectives. Now, of course, goals and objectives are related to one another in sort of a hierarchy. So again, our, the goals can be this big picture statement about our desired outcome. And then the objectives are what are needed, the specific measurable milestones that are needed to get towards that goal. And that both of these, when we have real clarity on what our goals and objectives are, then it starts to become more clear what the specific strategies or actions might be. Whether that's research or a policy action or an on the ground conservation action that's needed to achieve our objectives and ultimately achieve our goals. So again, these are, these are all connected to one another. So when we take the time to really push people to articulate clear goals and objectives, it's not because we need to know always, just because we need to know those things, but because a lot of our work stems from understanding what our goals and objectives are. So that clarity, being really clear about what our goals and objectives are is really important so that we can identify what are the most important or necessary actions that we need to take to achieve our goals and objectives. It's also really important to knowing whether or not we are being successful. So we wanna have goals and objectives that ultimately we can measure or quantify our progress towards achieving them. So as I say, I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, we really, um, want to push ourselves to be as specific about what our goals and objectives are so that we can actually provide indicators and monitor our progress towards achieving those goals. And then as I mentioned at the very beginning, taking the time to really clarify our goals and objectives is also really critical when you're working within a participatory project where you have either a collection of different research researchers or in the, in the case of co-production projects, um, like the type that are really identified in this call for proposals, when you're working with both managers or other kinds of decision makers as well, it's really important to take the time to make sure everyone's on the same page. So again, so that you're all heading in the, right di in the same direction and then um, in agreement about the path you're taking to try to get there. So when we talk about having clear goals and objectives, you may be familiar, you may, some of you may have heard this phrase of, of SMART objectives. Um, and so it's just an acronym that highlights some of the key characteristics of really clear and compelling goals and objectives. So the S stands for specific. And there we're talking about in the context of the conservation work that I do, it's trying to get people to be very specific about, is it a specific single species that you're concerned about and trying to protect? Is it perhaps a broader ecosystem community that you're trying to conserve? Or is it something more about the ecological function or the ecosystem service that comes from those ecosystems that you're really trying to conserve or protect? Um, we also want people to be very specific about the geographic scope of what they're trying to achieve. Are they trying to protect a particular species in a very specific place, like say a protected area? Are they trying to protect that species across its entire geographic range or distribution? Or maybe they're trying to protect an ecosystem service that could be provided by more than just one particular species or set of species, and that it's really that service that they're trying to conserve. So that's where we push people to be specific in their articulation of goals and objectives. The second criteria, the M stands for measurable. And as I mentioned earlier, we want to have goals and objectives that we can attempt to measure or have some indicator or some proxy of the progress that we're making towards achieving that goal or objective. Um, here in this uh, session, we're, we're using A 
to stand for agreed upon, and again, to emphasize the value of this process for um, getting everyone on the same page and, and um, sort of agreeing upon what the goals and objectives are. The R stands for realistic. Um, it's also sometimes called um, relevant. You know, we want it to be realistic. We want goals that we think we can realistically try to achieve over a given time frame and that are really relevant. Again, the objectives are relevant towards meeting our ultimate goal. And then lastly, we want to see goals and objectives that are time-based, or sometimes people will say time-bound, which is to say, are you trying to achieve this goal in the next three months, or objective within the next three months, or six months, or five years, or 10 years? So again, we can really be clear about the time frame over which we're trying to measure outcomes. So those are seen as some of the, the key characteristics that make up strong and compelling goals and objectives. Another aspect of thinking about your objectives that we wanted to highlight is that sometimes people will talk about two different kinds of objectives. Fundamental objectives versus means objectives. So what do we mean by that? A fundamental objective is really the end that you're trying to achieve, the end goal. Whereas a means objective is about the how. It's about a way of trying to achieve that end or that fundamental objective. So the fundamental objective is more about why and what's the bottom line that you really care about. And the means objective is more about the how. How are you proposing to get there? And we, we call out both the differences between these two objectives and place a great emphasis on really trying to get people to be clear about their fundamental objective. Because when we're, we're focused on the ends rather than the means for getting there, then it can really help us to find more creative solutions to the problems that we face. If we only consider a, a limited set of means or actions to achieve our end goals, then we may be missing out on other possible ways to achieve what we want to achieve. And so again, being really clear about what we're ultimately trying to achieve is really important to figuring out the range of options that might be available in terms of how we might get there. So an example of a fundamental objective might be something like we're trying to increase loon populations, perhaps because we're concerned about um, the conservation status of, this, of that bird species. Um, another example that's more based on an ecosystem service might be a fundamental objective of maintaining a population of caribou, which is a hunted ungulate species, in order to support its subsistence use by local communities. And so we're trying to maintain a population that can sustain uh, continued subsistence use. So those would be fundamental objectives, the outcomes that you're trying, the ultimate outcomes you're trying to achieve. Some examples of means objectives to get you there, in the case of the goal or the uh, fundamental objective of increasing loon populations, you might have a means objective related to minimizing the amount of lead contamination that comes from fishing tackle, the equipment we use to fish. So that's a means that could help you perhaps lead to um, the end objective of uh, increasing loon populations. In the case of the example about the uh, fundamental objective about maintaining a population of caribou that can sustain substance, substance use, perhaps you could have a research means objective that's about identifying the level of harvest, the annual harvest levels, that can sustain a viable population of caribou into the future. So again, different ways that you can think about your end goal or your ultimate end that you're trying to achieve, the fundamental objective, and then the means objectives being more about how you're gonna get there. In addition to trying to get people to think about their fundamental objective and stimulate more creative thinking about actions you could take, we also try to, I mean, what we find is that it's a lot easier to talk about our means objectives than it is our fundamental objectives. So sometimes we have to really push people hard to really get down to the why. So when they have an objective, we might follow up with some questions about, well, why do you care about that? 
Why do you want to minimize lead in fishing tackle? Why? To try to get at the fundamental objective. So I want to end this presentation with a few examples um, that, that relate to this overall question about, I know that your, your projects and your proposal writing is focused a lot on the research that you want to um, propose and conduct. And so we have this question of whether we think research objectives are, are they more likely to be fundamental objectives or means objectives? And so I thought we would explore this with an example and I welcome you to come off of mute and perhaps offer some thoughts or reactions. But here we have an example of an objective statement. The objective of our research is to understand the relative vulnerability of all the species in a protected area to climate change. So this is a, a research-based objective. And so I would just throw out to the group some of your thoughts and reactions, I'd love to hear them, on whether you see this as more of a fundamental or a means objective. So I don't know how easy it is for you to come off mute, but I welcome any thoughts or ideas and reactions to this question. You can come off mute or raise your hand in the chat window. And, and Elma, can you please uh, repeat in Spanish the, the request? Hola, acá Micaela Trimble oh. de Saras. Should I speak in English instead? Uh, oh. Perfecto, hablo en español. Entonces, muchas gracias, Molly, por, por tu presentación y, y lo que estás compartiendo con nosotros. Eh, a modo de ejemplo, entonces, eh, leería dos eh, objetivos, uno que sería instrumental y otro que sería fundamental. Un ejemplo de objetivo um, instrumental sería el que tenemos en nuestra prepropuesta como objetivo 1, relevar y analizar las crisis de provisión, escasez de agua en América del Sur y las respuestas de los sistemas de gobernanza y de generación de conocimiento ante las mismas. Este es un objetivo que se atiende claramente a partir de la, la literatura científica existente, eh, medios periodísticos, redes sociales, etc. Y un objetivo que sería más fundamental, que es el que tenemos como número 4, el último eh, de los objetivos que, incluyi, eh, que incluimos ahí, perdón, que es contribuir a la gobernanza del agua en la región con énfasis en la toma de decisiones, participación y legitimidad a partir del fortalecimiento de capacidades de anticipación, la articulación de conocimientos, la promoción de la experimentación y los mecanismos de aprendizaje sociales asociados. Eso es... Yeah. So actually, yeah, I, I probably won't be able to translate back for the folks who are maybe on the line who want to hear it in English. So I don't know if Paula may have been doing yeah, that. Um, yeah, Paula, Paula did, but then, um, and Elma can do a, a, quick, uh, a quick translation too, maybe. Uh, well, what? Uh, Mika has has presented two objectives or from their own proposal one is to oh, it's difficult for me to say it in English is to um, <laughs> <laughs> to know <laughs> you do it Mikaela because okay okay I can do it yeah. so the, the the one example that I gave as an as an as a means objective would be to uh, analyze the, the crisis of water provision uh, or water scarcity in South America and the responses uh, given by the governance systems and the uh, knowledge generation uh, spaces given those crises. Um, and I said that that objective could be addressed by the academic uh, literature existent already and, and, and other means like uh, press, for instance. And then the objective that I shared as an example of a fundamental objective is uh, to contribute to water governance in the region uh, with emphasis on decision making, participation and legiti legitimacy considering or uh, based on strengthening the anticipation capacities, um, knowledge, articulation, and the promotion of experimentation and mechanisms for social learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Great. So yeah, that's a great example. And um, you know, again, I think the way a lot of the ways that people sort of encourage folks to sort of take an objective statement, like the one on your screen or the one that was just contributed, um, was it Mika from Mika? And so is to sort of keep asking this question of why, you know, so why do we want to do that? Why do we want to do that? And we get to the point of saying, well, just because like that's what's important to us. Um, that is usually, you know, that's one of the signs that you may be approaching sort of a more fundamental objective. Um, so those were some examples of sort of more on the mean side and more on the fundamental side. And so the couple of other examples I have here. So the one on the screen, you know, I would generally, oops, sorry, I need to go back to controlling the slides. I would generally call this more of a means objective. I think research objectives are probably a little more likely to fall in the means objective category because the research is not necessarily the end goal of what we care about. Um, but it's usually a stepping stone towards getting us towards something that we really fundamentally care about. So in this case, you know, doing an analysis to look at the relative vulnerability of a, of a wide range of species perhaps could link to a more fundamental objective of trying to maintain populations of species that are vulnerable to climate change. So the first step might be to understand, well, which are those species that are most vulnerable to climate change? And, and, and obviously that's just one stepping stone towards then figuring out whether there are strategies to reduce the vulnerability of climate change facing those, that list of species or the most vulnerable species. Um, so that's again, a way of sort of linking your means to, your, to, to a possible fundamental objective. But now if your fundamental objective was a little different and it was about a specific species and wanting to maximize the likelihood that a specific species will either be recovered or be removed from an endangered species list, then that might lead you towards a different kind of means objective. You may not want to do research to understand the relative impact of climate change on all of the species in that protected area, but in fact, you might want to do a more targeted analysis on that particular species and maybe even some activities related to designing actions to reduce those vulnerabilities. So again, this is just sort of setting up the fact that, you know, getting a feel for how fundamental objectives might differ from your means objectives and how in the process of writing these proposals, I'm pretty certain that they're interested in seeing both of those and making sure the fundamental objective is clear. Um, but also that, you know, you also want to show how your means objective is setting you up to be successful in achieving your fundamental objective. So just a couple of examples to sort of illustrate what we mean um, by these different terms and a few definitions that I hope will be helpful as Amanda after me will go on and talk more about kind of how you might apply this in your preparations of your, of your projects and your proposals. Um, so for now, I think I've, I'm up at the end of my time, so I don't know if there is time for more general discussion and questions, but I'm happy to do so if there's time. <laughs> 